I check my check? Mic? Mic check? Good evening. And happy Monday, chap. How are you all doing? Been good October so far? As all of our advertisements imply, we are once again playing Citizen Sleeper tonight. I'm pretty sure we're fairly close to the end of the game, so I'm not expecting it to last many more streams. Still need to decide what we're going to be using, playing to replace the stream. Most likely another indie game. If not that, I would like to play Cyberpunk regularly, so we might play that. But it is the spooky season, so I do want to try and get at least one spooky game in there. You know, I have a lot of spooky... You know how I love horror games. I'm sure we got plenty in the host's backlog to look through. Maybe dark wood. Maybe something that's cyber horror-ish. The sky's the limit. You may notice that we have quite a few new redeems. My host has been looking to punish me... To punish me... <laughs> uh, attempt to punish me with some new redeems that are now up to your perusal. In addition, we also have a new community challenge, which might interest some of you. You know, just my own way of sort of getting back at them. Uh, we have acquired two radioactive nacho, or nacho chips. They're blue in color. They are supposedly a challenge to consume. If one of you, if y'all managed to make it to the end goal of 66,000, I believe, uh, channel points, we will consume one live. That ought to be fun, I imagine. In the meanwhile, though, let's go ahead and dive right into it. Let's go back and continue playing Citizen Sleeper. For those of you who are new to the stream, who do not have any idea what this game is, it is one of them uh, single-player tabletop RPGs, more or less. Test, 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 test. Awesome. That's the quickest way I can explain it. It is more or less a game where you roll dice and you do actions and you hope that you don't do something terrible. We have completed most of the main stage, main quests, I believe, and failed one of them, unfortunately. So that's why I'm under the impression that we are getting close to the end. Go ahead and oh. Go ahead and end the evening for now. So as you can see here, we're out of dice. So nothing more we can do today. Uh oh. We're running out of uh, energy here. Thankfully, we are just going to go ahead and steal some food for ourselves. The rest of these rolls are pretty garbage, I'm not going to lie. But it should be no problem to us. Unless time Lems gets time in the shipyard, he won't qualify to say real crew lottery. Watching Mina gives him that chance. Let's go ahead and do it. I don't know how watching a child could be unsafe, but something tells me I don't want to find out either. Oh man. So it is possible actually to fail this. As you can see here, there's a 25% chance of something going wrong, but hopefully uh, nothing will go wrong, and nope, nothing went wrong. I'm going to re-roll our dice here, and voila, just like that, we have passed this check. Mima has been babysat. They are back in one piece. She's asleep, whispers Lem, creeping back out of the, you know, his tiny bedroom, sliding the door shut as he does. You are perched at a thin bar in the main room, the slate in front of you still glowing 
with Mina and your drawings from Cycle Spent Together. There's a ring, the only world Mina has known, with stick figures standing along its edge. The tall one is you. Drink? asks Slim, producing a worn looking bottle of Pirola from under the bar. It's constant glowing amber in the fluorescent light. Her. Lem nods and glugs a few fingers into a couple of metal tumblers and sits down with you at the bar. Cheers, he offers, and you clink the metal containers together. You know, we actually have something to celebrate this time around. Lem gives you a sideways look. I made the assembly team on the side reel. Yeah, side reel, side reel. He grins broadly, clearing me. Clearly he has been desperate to give, tell you all cycle. Amazing. Lem holds up his drink. Couldn't have done it without you keeping an eye on little meanie back here. Lem shifts a little on his stool as looks uncomfortable. How's our girl doing, sleeper? I haven't seen much of her these past cycles. Doing great. Of course she is. He playfully squeezes his shoulder. She talks about you a lot, you know? Draws you. I'm glad she has a friend that isn't me. His eyes drift to the bedroom door. You okay? He nods. I can't take all the credit for Mina. She isn't actually mine. He gazes into the middle distance. What? Wow. Huh. This game is full of surprises like that, chap. I pulled her off of a refugee shuttle out by one of Ember's moons. The colony was falling apart for decades after Solheim collapsed, surviving on next to nothing. Eventually, some of the residents tried to make for the eye on these decrepit old shuttles. He sloshes the drink around his tumbler. They had no idea what they were doing. The one Mina was on decompressed halfway there, in one space. The only reason she made it was someone sealed her in a weapon locker. She was ice cold when I reached her. Purple lips, he shivers. Once I picked her up, I wouldn't let go. The medic treated her with me, still clinging to her. He takes a drink, still not sure why. He reaches over and refills his cup. We weren't exactly anybody's heroes. You understand? We are a private military, hired in by Conway to protect their claims in the collapse. In the collapse. But once I got Mina, that was it. I quit. Got us dumped here. You saved her. I'm going to sound like an idiot now, but... He sighs. She saved me. That's the truth of it. He looks around the decaying unit. It's stained plastic plating and flickering lights. Me? I brought her to this. She was tiny, too small to know what she lost, but I can't stop thinking about it. He rubs his eyes, dark with tiredness. What if our number doesn't come up in the draw, sleeper? What then? Side reel will sail off without thought, leaving us here. How kind of life is that for her? He'll make it. Sorry, I know you don't have it any better. He looks at his cup and pushes it away down the bar. This is a celebration, right? Both of us on the team now, both of us in with a chance. Together. That's right, we hold on together. Imagine, all three of us riding the side real horizon out of here, to a new world. He looks into his glass for a moment. Yeah, I drank just too fast. <laughs> he laughs. Lem sands and starts to clear the glasses into the outer wash. Need some sleep, friend. See you around. Alright then. He catches your shoulder as you turn to leave. Thank you, sleeper. I mean it. From both of us. He pats your shoulder and you slip out into the dark of the hallway, wall walkway, with thoughts of little Mina in your mind. Good robot. This game can be so heartwarming. But yeah, as you see, as you can tell, this is part of the reason why I think we're nearing the end of the game. We are running out of missions, and so far I've only failed one. The one being the newest mission over here, where you actually have to help some spacers. We pretty much almost completely filled out our skill set here, too. I didn't mean to beat this game, or to do so well in this game the first time, but you know, sometimes it just turns out that way. Still have no idea what a ship mine's for, though. Before we complete or continue any more with the uh, side reel stuff, let's go ahead and... Uh... Oh, no, Bliss is still taking her sweet time. Okay, never mind. I guess we're going to continue working on some starships. I ought to play some space games sometime, you know? As much as I enjoy space games, might as well, right? Neutral outcome. Plus 15 cryo. Let us go ahead and go to bed. Over here in our repaired unit. 
I still wonder if anything would happen if I keep feeding this tree. A lot cheaper to do so now. Like, how much do I have to... Ah! Death wish. A surprise as always. How are you doing tonight? Welcome to the stream. I'm glad you can make it despite it being so late for you. I wonder if there is an end limit to feeding the stray. I guess we'll find out eventually, right? I'm doing okay. I'm kind of upset that I wasn't able to book a hotel for a convention, because it's very competitive. But, yeah, shit happens, right? Oh, ow, thank you. Moritz, hey, a quiet voice greets you as you leave. Sleeper, it's me. Moritz sounds familiar. I know you. Moritz, he pauses. I work for Bliss. He rubs the back of his head. You're not an easy person to find. Move around. Moritz holds his hand, up his hands. Hey, no judgment. It's cool. You both stand there for a moment, each waiting for the other to speak. What's up? Ah oh, yeah, well, Bliss needs you. Her job just came in, a real big one. She's asking for you to come up and help her out, he nods sagely. Alright, I'll be right there. Nice, yeah. Moritz stands there for a little while, unsure of the message to her. I got it. Cool, cool, cool. He looks around. Bliss just likes me to do a thorough job, you know? He rubs his hands together before burying them in his jacket pockets. He seems like a cool person, right? Teach my friend how to be a better villain? Oh, in what way? I may know a thing of two about villainy. <laughs> See you, sleeper. Moritz ambles down, off down the corridor, picking a filter cap on his way up. I'm going to head to Bliss's Bay then. Alright, let's head to Bliss's Bay and see what she wants with me. Sealing the leaks? Somehow Bliss swung a tanker contract. The catch is that the worker work needs to be turned around fast. Too fat. Fuck me. They weren't kidding. An R a RP-ish way since they easily made villains boring. Oh, I see. In the roleplay. Roleplaying is fun. I know a thing or two about roleplaying as well. Um, how do they, if I dare ask, how do they make um, the villain too boring? <laughs> You have my curiosity now. Shit, that was easy. Game over, man. Game over. Also, it's fall break. You can stay up later. Oh, cool. I forgot that fall break was a thing. Also, uh, one way is they barely made character of them. Second, they used powers instantly. Oh, yeah, that's a, those are typical newbie mistakes. <laughs> Sounds like you know your stuff already, though. As you both wait in the airlock for it to cycle back to the bay, Bliss thumps you on the arm. Nicely done, sleeper. We cleared that contract, no problem. She's strapped. Not much, Sour, Sour Werewolf. How are you doing tonight? Welcome to the stream. Uh, three one way one of their villains got reborn a lot. Oh, that's really dumb. I hate when they redo a character that many times. At that point, you might as well just make a new character, right? Once we are back in the bay, we can check if the payment has come through and divide it up. She stretches. Feels good. The airlock clunks and the lights flicker, and a moment later, you're back in the bay where Moritz is in the racks trying to figure out where the mess of tools Bill left in the wake should be hung. Hey, Moritz! Yeah. Moritz looked over his shoulder. Sleeper. He went, spins a wrench in his hand. Looked like a clean work out there, he nods respectfully. You look over at Bliss, who is already gliding over to her management console. She twirls a little as she crosses the caver caver cavernous bay. No one you've ever met moves as well in Zero G as she does. It's like she was born into it. Shit, Bliss slams a fist into the console. Shit, shit, shit. What's up? Oh, now here we go. Fourth is like second, but they use their good powers instantly. Hill, long time no see. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing tonight? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fourth is a second, but they... So they keep using their powers instantly. That sucks. They sound like you weren't kidding about them, so they sound like a boring villain. 
How are you doing tonight, Gil? We're just playing um, some Citizen Sleeper. I'm fairly sure we're nearing the end of the game because there aren't that many missions left. We just got this, and we just got this left. Unless more pop up, of course. I can't even... Bliss closes her eyes. Come here. Bliss calls you over. Look at this. Just look. She spins the terminal screen, and you see the details for the basic camp. You see an entry for the Ember's Wake, a repair fee paid in full, in full the moment you finished up the job. But then directly after, the whole amount was transferred back out into an unknown account. Someone is embezzling money from us. I'm good. Little man is sick, so I'm doing some house cleaning while he naps. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope your son uh, recovers quickly. <laughs> now my way of making a villain is not using powers instantly, but use nothing but a sword and show the heroes and powerful lads powers. Ah, big mood. I like those kind of villains. How can this happen? I can tell you how. My ex is a sneaky little conniving shit. She punches the terminal. He must have coded a backdoor into the machine before he left. She rubs her forehead. There's no way we can. She pauses to think more. It's from me. Ah! Ah, uh, had stuff throw up my face again. Thank you, Death. <laughs> Which builds up the heroes being scared of what the villain can do with pa without powers. That is a very good point. Um, some of the most scary villains in any media are the ones that seem really collected and well put together up until the climax when they just start losing control. Uh, oh, I forgot all about that. <laughs> shit. You remembered you could throw shit at my face. Which reminds me, uh, chat, if you take a look, take a gander in the channel point section, you'll find that there are several new redeems that are available. We also have a new community challenge, the first one since our horror story community challenge. It's called, we get to, you all get to force me to consume a blue chip, but only if you raise over 66,000 points in 30 days. <laughs> oh, thank you for contributing to the blue chip challenge, uh, Deathwish. 74 channel points. The first of many, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, Christ, people would have to actually pay me to do that. <laughs> you know what? I'm really curious of how the blue chip challenge would actually taste because I saw a video of a Hispanic woman. She was going out of her way to like lick it all over, her, rub it all over her lips and lick it on her tongue. And she said in Spanish that apparently it's very bad tasting. So I guess maybe the only thing it has going for it is the fact that it's hot and the actual flavor is not exactly there. So I'm really curious now and my mouth is watering just thinking about it. I'm really curious to see of just how, you know, hot it actually it is. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, exactly. And I bought two of them. Or rather, my host bought two of them. So, you know... <laughs> I could t Uh... Quartz, throw me the wrench. You gonna fix it? Quartz spins the wrench across the bay. Bliss smiles. Something like that. Bliss blings the wrench down the terminal hard. You flinch backwards as a hail of computer parts spill up into the bay in a glittering arc. Fragments of screen, memory, sections of the casing. When Bliss is done, she clips the wrench to her tool belt. Try backdooring your way into, the, into that, you shit. Mortz drifts out from his hiding place amongst the racks. Bliss, he says tentatively, you want me to... He looks at the arc of fragments drifting around the bay nervously. Bliss shakes her head, no, she sighs. I've got it. You'll get me a new terminal, cheapest you could find. Cobble one together from pieces at the ore exchange if you have to. Can I help? Bliss glides over to a panel by the wall. Don't worry, one of the first things I had installed when we specced out this place was a cleaning sweep. She flicks over a plastic cover on a huge red button. Watch yourself. She hammers the button and a row of laser emitters unfold from the bay wall. What the fuck? They start crawling their way across the work area, frying the debris as they do in pulses of burning light. Bliss smiles. It's that or just space the whole bay every few cycles. Are you okay? Not really. She stares at the sweet panel. I just don't seem to be able to extricate myself from this shit, no matter how hard I try. The cleaning sweep buzzes and crackles as it works its way across the bay. That account wasn't everything. I'm not that stupid. Once more, it gets back all secured and flush everything else. She flicks a nearby piece of debris into the path of sleep. Clean break. Then we take another contract. That's it. He shuts off the sweep as it reaches the near end of the bay. I'm in. You better be, Plus laughs, because there's no way you're getting your investment back unless you are. She rubs her forehead. I'm sorry, sleeper. 
I know you work for this too, but next time there won't, won't be the same. That's okay. She smiles. See you in a few cycles. More to let you know. She winks and kicks off into the bay to finish cleaning up. And with that, we're going to wait another four turns until Bliss lands another contract. In the meanwhile, chat, we, um... Uh... wonder if there's any benefit to renting a capsule here. Hand over the shits and get a passkey for capsule 0451. Time to find out which of the identical births is yours. Now I'll repair myself with some scrap. Inject some fertilizer. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's what that's for. All right then, now I have a reason to actually collect scrap parts. Cool. And here I thought it was impossible to escape uh, condition loss, you know? So when Doc B2 comes back around in one more cycle, we should be able to repair ourselves, chat. I also need to figure out what to do with the hunter here. It doesn't seem like there's any more purpose to us, like... Actually, no, I take that back. There's probably a reason for collecting all those ship mites, right? So what we should do is see if we can finish out Caster's table here. Get some Havenage protocols. Or find where we could find the Havenage protocols, because Yatagon Agent, Keynode, Yatagon Agent, Keynode, Havenage Agent. And would you know it? Bypass, extract, data. Have, do I have, or do you, or have you ever played FTL? I played FTL back when it was new. Long time ago. Used to love that game. Why do you ask? <laughs> I never did figure out what this encrypted key is for, honestly. End the cycle. Oh, uh, let's go feed our cat some more. I still don't understand what feeding the cat's supposed to do, but maybe there's an achievement or something for doing that. Who knows? Kind of reminds me a bit of it. I'm too smooth ring to ever be beaten it, though. I've only ever beaten FTL, like, once. I don't remember how I did it, but it did happen once to me. Probably never again, unfortunately, but, you know... The game's changed a lot since I last played, so who knows, right? I might consider playing that game sometime on stream because I've been meaning to play a, some kind of space game on stream at least once since space operas are one of my main interests in f as far as writing fiction is concerned. Hmm... I guess I could harvest this whenever I want. I don't really need to right now, though. There's no point in doing that. Let's head back. <laughs> uh, I have to buy the scrap. All right, fair enough. Sell me your scrap. I can use that now to repair myself. Cool. How much does it repair myself anyway? Oh, that's bullshit. All right, I guess 
it's not that op. It doesn't repair you all that much, does it, chat? Look at this shit. At least I'll have, like, enough here for five, I suppose? Oh, okay. Never mind. It repairs you fairly quick, all things considered. Let's see now. Let's, uh, look for more Havenage... More Havenage, uh, data. Right here. More Havenage data. We just need to extract one more. Per and then after that, we can go give it to... What's his face? Caster? Of course, the problem is finding the other Havenage. There it is. And this, of course, I cannot use these. We'll unlock that. These are too... These dice rolls are too high. The dice roll is too damn high, chat. Said no one ever. Everyone wants high dice rolls in other games, right? As each turn progresses, the side rail over here, this awesome looking spaceship, is being put together, which is kind of pog. Very cool. And we're even making some money on the side. How's that? How's them apples? Mm -hmm. Cool. Nat 20s for Ave 1. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Alright then. Let's go feed our cat one more time. Since we got the money to do so anyway. I still, I'm really curious what feeding the cat does. If I'm gonna get, if eventually the cat... I wonder if the cat will eventually like me. For feeding it as much as I do. Like, how much do I need to feed this cat? This cat must be fat by now with as much as I'm feeding it. Yeah! Hell yeah! I managed to get five dice this time. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Alright. Let's go ahead and uh, hack one more Avenage agent. Go ahead and give that to Aster over here. Hear him out. Wait. Did I forget to... Oh, derp. I was moving so fast I forgot to actually get the data, it seems like. Yeah, this is the one I unlocked, right? There we go. Okay. Caster's table. Give you the data. He's giving me another ship mine. I still haven't figured out what the point of these ship mines are. But I've completed everything that Caster has asked for, so I don't need to do that anymore, right? There is a... You can all... There's also supposed to be a way to deal with the hunter. But so far, the game has not given me a mission for it. So I don't even know if you're supposed to do anything about that, honestly. still have a couple more cycles to go before that's available. We're gonna head back down to the rim. Gonna continue working on our spaceship chat. I don't like those odds. This is better. Making monies while we do it as well. Usual outcome. Positive outcome, positive outcome. 
Can we roll this? And what do you know? I rolled another die, six dice. Awesome. We are making our way steadily. I'm fairly sure we're going to finish this game kind of early today. Which means we'll have to find something else to do tonight. But don't worry. We got plenty of things we could do. Under in 37, though. <coughs> now, just keep feeding our cat. We got the money to burn. Uh, basically, each turn you get new die, and you use them to complete different mission tasks. And those tasks are augmented by your skills, which you have listed here. It's a very simple uh, ro dice rolling system. And you either succeed, get a neutral option, or fail. So I've done pretty well in this game so far. I've only ever failed one of these missions. And I feel bad for it because it's actually... I actually failed the DLC mission, believe it or not. Because apparently you're not supposed to do a DLC mission until you've beaten every other mission in the game. Because when you beat every other mission in the game, you pretty much have maxed out all your skills here. And you get a new upgrade point every time you complete one of these. And as you can see, there's only two left, which is how I know the game is almost at its end. Still no idea what doing this does, if anything. Oh my god, these are horrible fucking rolls. Jesus. Woo! These are... This is bad. Really bad, chat. Uh, thankfully I've made friends with the uh, mushroom... With the uh, new mushroom stall guy. Or guy. So he can just feed me. And I have flushed with cash right now. So, you know... Uh, voila. That would drive me insane just having one failure multitude of failures I can live with. <laughs> I know, right? Because it basically I'm like, I'm not going to play this, I'm pretty sure, I'm not going to play this game again until the, Nick, until the new DLC come out. So, this game will forever be like a 90%. Just out of reach of perfecting it, more or less. <laughs> That's awful. I rerolled my dice, thanks to my skill, and I got a nice 6 over here. We're going to use this to continue working on the side rail. We're actually getting fairly close to the end. No problem. Take your time. Sweet dreams to your kid. Hey Silvis, welcome to the stream. How are you doing tonight? Mm -hmm. Thank you once again for your blessing. How are you doing? Glad to see you. How much money are you going to give me for this information? Uh, 10 cryo? How's the game treating me? It's 
treating me pretty well. We're actually near, I'm fairly sure we're nearing the end of the game though. Uh, we're pretty much at, we only have two missions left, more or less. So, I'm, on, I'm still sad that I actually failed one of these quests. Just the one. But, eh, that happens. Nothing like playing both sides to make this all this money. <laughs> it's a fairly good game. If you like cyberpunk genre, the cyberpunk is a genre. Oh, welcome back. I was just telling Silvus that if you like cyberpunk as a genre, or if you like really uh, table, if you like uh, narrative-based games like this, which have some a little bit of uh, role-playing game aesthetic, a lot of dice rolling, a lot of RNG, then you may enjoy this game. I am extremely biased towards this sort of game, being that I am a product of cyberpunk science fiction myself. So, as you might imagine, this game was actually dream come true for me. It's very relaxing, kind of sad. Mm -hmm. It's also fairly inexpensive, I believe. Let me see here. It is currently... Currently... Oh, never mind. It's about 20 bucks. So, you know, about average, I'd say. Really good for the price, in my opinion. And it looks like here that a that a the uh, next DLC Refuge is coming out, which continues the story or story from the previous one that involves a number of refugees coming to the station. They're being chased by an unknown disaster, which is befalling colonies across the outer rim. I was just telling uh, Gil that I actually accidentally I, that I actually accidentally failed this mission because they warn you that you should play this after you complete every other mission because by then you would have gained enough upgrade points to really cut out your character and so in order to complete that mission perfectly you would have had to pretty much do everything perfectly and I was just out of reach. Mm -hmm. A progressing story, it seems like. Oh, and it's free, by the way. <laughs> uh huh. So, this is an interesting game to find to try out. You can also go ahead and ignore the complaints about anti capitalist propaganda in the forums and about the game being woke. I'm not much of a leftist myself. I will say that Cyberpunk as a genre has always had leftist ideals, and this game is, while not apol apolitical, it is fairly political because the genre of science fiction itself is very political. It's very balanced in such a way, it's very balanced, the game does not, the uh, storylines, the characters do not sound, do not, have not, in my opinion, at any moment felt like cutouts. You don't feel like you're being preached to. Um, the game makes a strong case for why end-stage capitalism is fucking horrible, and why in some ways we are in fact living in a cyberpunk dystopia right now, even though this game takes place in the slightly far future in a post, uh, in a post, uh, space travel universe. That is very, that is correct, actually. I always, I rail against a lot of cyberpunk works, especially today, that are all cyber and no punk. I would much prefer, I would always prefer more punk over cyber, personally. And I will say that cyberpunk as a genre tends to be very depressing. If you've seen Edge Runners, you, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, thankfully, this game, while being extremely depressing is itself, um, does allow you, through your choices, to, if not make a completely positive ending, then a, de a decidedly better ending than what it could have been. Punk's not dead. Damn right it's not. Sleeper, Moritz is waiting for you on your way out. How have you been? Eh, yeah, busy. I see, I see, he nods. Well, I'll get right to it then. Bliss sent me down. We've scored another contract and she needs your help. That's the message, he pauses. Look, I know last time the payment didn't come through, but you did good work. Bliss knows that. It's no problem. Okay then, he pauses again. She's doing her best, you know. I know. He nods. 
See you up there. Wards turns and strides off, leading you in the corridor. Time to help Liz, and maybe this time you think to yourself it'll work out. Now, I will say another thing. This is not a spoiler, by the way. Because this is literally the first thing that happens. You're an escaped android. Actually, no. I, android's not even the correct term for this. You're an escaped synthetic humanoid. You are planned obsolescence by default. You're literally dying, and it even says this in the trailer. If you don't die from your health bar here, which is slowly decreasing, running out, you will die by literally being killed in-game. And there are many ways to die in this game. So, the very beginning when you first play this game, it's kind of stressful because you're trying to balance out um, keeping yourself alive with, and just with um, keeping yourself alive by keeping your health meter here and your energy meter here from dropping too low, while also racing against the clock to do missions for people so that they can keep you alive longer. And there are multiple ways to accomplish that. However, once you actually do succeed in this, and it is possible to succeed in this, the game becomes a cakewalk because then you can just take your time with everything. I'm not going to say which one it is, but there's even a mission, a major mission, that will eventually give you enough um, supplies to comfortably keep yourself alive unless you really, really, really take your sweet ass time about things. And even then, later on in the game, there are ways to get more supplies for you so you can theoretically keep yourself alive indefinitely. I think Cyberpunk often potentially even by design shows problems with current systems by reasonable extrapolation. And you have it, you can hit it right on the head. Um, back in the golden day, in the uh, early days of Cyberpunk in the 80s, Neuromancer, uh, System Crash, and all stuff like that, they took a lot of things that were issues at the time and they basically just exaggerated, exaggerated them to their natural endings. Um, and they were supposed to be predictions of the future, and unfortunately for them, over 30 years later, 40 years later actually, 40 years later, Many of the things that were predicted back in the late 80s, early late, early to late 80s have to come true already. Now, I would say that the world is not quite as dystopic as it could be. It could totally be so much worse. But we're def there's definitely signs of things that were originally fiction that have become uh, reality. Like, for example, I just uh, saw a story that was trending on Twitter. PayPal changed their terms of service agreements and they added this clause in there where if at any time... PayPal determines that you are, you, are, are, uh, what's the word? If, if, if at any time PayPal determines that you are engaging in misinformation, they will fine you $2,500. Up until today, where PayPal is now backtracking heavily by that, from that, because of extreme, because of an extreme reaction by pretty much everyone who uses PayPal to this news, causing in a stop drop and stop a drop in stock of about nine percent, I believe, and many thousands of people <laughs> canceling their PayPal accounts because you know these mega corps. At the end of the day, they always just listen to their money to their uh, to their bottom line. So that's just one small example of um, the. Possible abuses of power that mega corporations or just corporations in general can have over a common person. And there's also little things that most people conveniently don't think about all the time. Uh, things as seemingly annoying but not life threatening as, say, as, say, uh, always on DRM, or if you were to live in the Philippines up until recently. Uh, it was legal there for hospitals to deny treatment to you if you didn't have health insurance or any money. You come in, you're bleeding out from a gunshot wound, the first thing they'll ask you in the emergency room is, can you pay for this? If you say no, or you shake your head, or they don't find an insurance card in you, they will wheel you back out, they will leave you on the front door. I'm not exaggerating this. Well, that was until recently. Supposedly they don't do that anymore, but... Cyberpunk is real, chat. Uh, let me read chat here, which is part of the why old Shadow One has lost a bit of its edge. We aren't so too far into the 80s dystopic future, but we are lacking the magic and robot arms. The robot arms, not so much. The magic, yeah, unfortunately. 
I mean, I was sure as hell could use some uh, shaman uh, shaman magic right about now. But at the same time, if you we do, it's kind of wild to think that we actually do have robotic arms. We do actually have functional robotic augment limbs, which you could control with your with uh, brain waves. Um, now they've discovered that you don't necessarily need to hook electrodes into your brain or to uh, install basic BM or basic um, CBI computer brain interfaces to use that. Modern, a lot of modern augmented prosthetic hands with opposable thumbs and working limbs, they actually go based off of muscle movement. So depending on how much of your limb is remaining, they design the augmented limb in such a way that it detects the minuscule muscle movements in your remaining limb and it change it and it affects your phalanges based off of what it thinks that you're most likely trying to do. And these are fairly, most of them are fairly simplistic in this in this manner. They're kind of like the um, prosthetic arm that you'd see in the manga Berserk where they can grip or they can move their fingers. But I've seen some where they allow you to like move single fingers or single digits as opposed to just, you know, gripping like this. Muscle movement and nerve activation in the rest of them. Exactly, exactly. Let's say the widespread robo arms. Yeah, you can't just cut off an entire limb and use it like perfectly yet. Not yet anyway, but they're getting moving in that direction. You know what's really freaky? So we do have cyber eyes after our fashion, which allow you to see basic shapes if with uh, with augmented with augmented eyes. But the, many of the companies that made manufactured the first cyber eyes have gone bankrupt. So you have a group of people that have cyber eyes who are f increasingly finding their eyes starting to fail on them. And the companies that service those products don't exist anymore so there's no one who can replace them or do software updates. So just like in the Deus Ex series, and also just like in Cyberpunk 2077, you literally have people running around with defective augmented limbs, which they can't use anymore. There's an interesting potential application of AI and robotic prosthetics. You know what? AI and robot and body prosthetics is actually a good point. That might be a relatively uh, harmless... It might be a relatively harmless... Um, harm a relatively harmless... But well, you know, unless someone finds a way to fuck with it, of course. Um, harmless uh, usage of artificial intelligence, of uh, using machine learning to kind of guess the manner in which you'll use your limb. I haven't thought of that that. Now, if Elon Musk were in, an industry, were in an industry, I'm sure he would sell it in tiered plans where, oh, if you have this certain tier, you'll have this sort of amount of um, usage of your limb. But if you stop paying us, we're just going to turn off your arm. That's the cynical side of me talking, though. So I take what I just said with a grain of salt. <laughs> I'm glad that y'all are as interested in cyberpunk stuff as I am. You know, I rarely get to talk about the source of stuff in stream. The last time I did was when a certain follower came on and came in on stream and asked me about myself, about where I'm from, about the place I used to inhabit, how I came to live here on Twitch, you know, my good old backstory stuff. Machine learning can already predict physics and movements. Should you give me a demo arm and some patient data, I could try and make that happen. AI isn't all too complicated. Well, that's cool. Do you yourself work in IT? I mean, in meat space. Mm -hmm. Hey, Deathwish, welcome back. <laughs> Still not one percent. But damn. Well, I mean, it's sixty-six thousand channel points and you gave 74 so you know over time it will fill itself up also I'm pretty even though it's set to 30 days I only set it to 30 days because that's the maximum number of days you can set it 
So even if it doesn't reach it in time in 30 days, I'll just reset it so that people can continue contributing. I will make you eat the chip if I have to grind. As you wish. 224, huh? Do your worst. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so Bliss says that it's time to help her out again. Let's go talk to Bliss. See what we got going on here. Ooh, a farm freighter. That's actually really cool. I like the design of this ship. It has this, uh, it has like a uh, grass and stuff growing inside it. I'm w I'm willing to not throw stuff at you. Silvus has contributed two thousand total to the Consume the Blue Chip Challenge. Silvus, thank you so much for contributing to the challenge. Much much appreciated. Do you know what the Blue Chip Challenge is? We're at 3% already, chat. The blue chip challenge is basically a challenge to force me to eat the one chip challenge on stream. It will be streamed. The pain will be immeasurable, but good. What VTuber is not a glutton for punishment, am I right? <laughs> I'll contribute more, but there's a 2k limit per stream. Yeah, unfortunately, that's been set in place, I think, by Twitch itself. Excuse me. At least I've never been to a stream that allows you to contribute more than 2,000 per stream. So if I were to stream again tomorrow and you were to visit, you could drop another 2k if you so wished. <laughs> uh, let's see now. Sacrifice. Uh, oh. Saving the crop. The sycamore seed needs to be reinforced and sealed, otherwise the crop will be lost. Vent the section and you have a better chance of survive saving the remaining crops, but you will lose some in the process. The question is how many? Fragile biome. The sycamore seed's internal biome is in trouble. Every action will bring it closer to collapse. Oh, that's not good. That is the incredibly spicy large nacho, if I remember correctly. I should have tried my hardest. <laughs> well, I mean, no pressure. Like I said, the 30-day thing there is only there because that's the maximum number of days I could set. Even if we 30 days is up, I'm, you know I'm just going to extend it. So I guess... Doing this is bad, because it might destroy the biome. And judging from the number of stars, I can only presume that it's going to... that doing this once is going to be bad. So we're probably not supposed to do that. We should probably do it the slow way, chat. Does this say five in it? One, two, three, four, five. One, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, that's bullshit. Yeah, fuck that. This thing will destroy the ship faster than save it. All right, we'll just do it the slow way, I guess. All right, cool. So we're actually almost halfway there. Yep, we're doing pretty well so far, chap. This has a 25% chance of failure. Let's hope it doesn't fail. It fucking failed, oh my God. But we're halfway there, chap. It's looking good. I think we're, I think we're good. Maybe. Maybe. to self-repair ourselves using some scrap bits and I want to since I have 200 credits let me just go get some more to the cat I wonder if there's an achievement there I'm really curious if there's an achievement for constantly feeding my cat
Who knows, really? All right, let's go to bed. Now, I'm curious what this encrypted key stuff is for. Like, is there something I could use it on? Perhaps this keynote? End the cycle. Ah, we're starving, chat. Oh, we're starving. Shit, shit, shit. We're starving. Oh, no. Good thing I can feed. Good thing I have so much money, right? I could just feed myself. <laughs> I love mushrooms. Alright then. Let's go ahead and help Bliss out with that job. Which we're probably going to finish fairly soon. Here it goes, the moment of truth. Can we do it? A neutral outcome. Alright, so let's re-roll this. We got a four. We win, chap. We've saved the sycamore seed. You and Bliss are floating in the base airlock, waiting for the cycle. You pick a few leaves from your clothes as you wait. They float around the chamber as if carried by a lazy wind. Clean work. Bliss bows a little. Well, thank you, Sleeper. You didn't do so badly yourself. She checks her tool belt. Seems like we are getting into a good rhythm. And now, familiar sequence of clunks and rattles sound out, and then the whole door hisses open. The moment it does, you know something has once again gone wrong. What's all this? Bliss asks in a confused looking Moritz. Beside him are a set of crates anchored to the bay floor. He has clearly just brought them in through the bay's freight lock. Moritz looks nervously between the two of you before answering. It's payment, he runs a hand along the crate. The sycamore seed crew just brought them over. He stops, but they see but seeing the look on Bliss's face, face adds, they were very thankful. I bet they were, she clenches her fists. What the hell is inside? Moritz leans over and struggles with the catches on either side, each side of the crate. As he does, Bliss turns to you. Don't say it. Bliss stares in his face. Don't you dare say it. Say what? You know. She looks back at you. This isn't my fault. Moritz finally catches the gets the catch his free and the lid floats off, drifting up into the bay. As it does, a small brown lump floats up with it. Moritz reaches out and catches it as it passes him. Is that a... Mushroom. Bliss finishes. A damn mushroom. They paid in food, chat. <laughs> they paid us in mushrooms? Not just mushrooms. He holds out a clump of tightly packed leaves. Produce. Bliss starts laughing. Goddamn Haifa commune. Should have known they didn't have a shit to throw between them. She knocks a small brown mushroom across the bay. Stop, Bliss. Moritz grabs her hand. These are good. Fresh. We can sell them. To who, Moritz? Are we running a grocer's now? We need cryo, otherwise this whole bay will be shut down. We can't pay for parts with Gleevy Greens. She waggles them in Moritz's face, but actually, you can sell mushrooms in this game. I can use them. Bliss raises an eyebrow. What for? What? For whole crates? What? For whole crates? Even you can't be that hungry. You can take a few, but the rest will sell. She smiles to herself. Or at least Moritz will sell them, if he is so eager. Moritz closes up the crates and starts moving them. It isn't that bad, Bliss. It's a step in the right direction. He glances at you, looking for backup. They'll sell well. Bliss sighs. Look, so looks like I went into business with a couple of wannabe farmers. And I took that personally. She laughs. Prove me wrong, then. Show me this is a windfall. She kicks away towards new patch together terminal. Until then, I'll be working on how to keep this place open. Moritz mounts a thank you and goes back to moving the crates. You better be on your way too. It's true though, you can actually sell these things. See?
There's only one problem. I only have two. I need three Matatakis. The Gurula Cups. Um, I need to find who can take the Gurula Cups, actually. Pretty sure this requires stabilizer synthesis, so we can't use that. Can't give it to them. This is where I used to sleep over here. Well, shit. It makes sense. Produce would be decently rare in space. You bet. In fact, the grand majority of the food eaten on this side of the station, the other half of the station, I should say, is in fact mushrooms. Mushrooms is kind of an inside joke in this game. You should see mushrooms all over this game. You can tell the developers really like their mushrooms. Now, what the hell am I going to use this mushroom for is my question, because I already used Kirillo Caps elsewhere, elsewhere. And I don't think I can give any more fungus among us to Emphis. And I wish I could eat them. Well, that's fine. Let's go ahead and take a breather for the oh wait. Can we sell them to the ore exchange? No, we can sell money here. So we're just gonna go ahead and take a breather for now, I guess. They are decently easy to grow in hydrotroponics. That's very true. I actually have one of those uh, small box sets of mushroom spores you can grow in a box. I've never, I haven't taken the chance to actually grow them yet. Since it's winter time, I might do that now because otherwise the only other plants I have to turn to survive the winter are going to be my pepper plants. Alright, let's end the cycle, chat. These are horrible rolls. Whew! Those are bad. <laughs> Those are real bad. I wonder what we would see down here. You know, I keep getting these encrypted keys, but I have no idea what their purpose is. At least I haven't found a purpose for them yet. Hunters can be pissed. That's weird. I was expecting a hunter to pop out by now. Is there any more keynotes? Is this the rest of is this the end of it? Might be this one. So I've unlocked all the keynotes. I have collected five encrypted keys. A stream of passcodes able to unlock the station's aging mag locks. You know what? I think I understand what these things are for now. There's probably a quest somewhere in this game that involves stealing a ship, and that's the reason why the game is having you find all these ship mine things. I wonder if the whole point of the, all this was to escape on your a ship of your own of some kind or something. Of course, this could just be the genre savvy activating, you know? It's gonna take a while until they find more work for me, so let's go ahead and do a job or three over here in the shipyard. Make some money while we do so. 
We're actually getting fairly close to the end of this too. Alright, time to go to bed again. We're starving, chap. It's not looking good. It's a good thing that I can just... Actually, why should I waste my money on that? I can just... I, why should I waste my rolls on that? I could just eat some food. It's not like I'm poor right now or anything. There we go. We're literally just one away from completing this. Ah, fuck. We failed. As you tear out the relay systems, you feel the pressure in his work putting you on your decaying body. This job could kill you. Fuck, fine. I can't believe I used a six dice roll for that one. You spent... Alright. There, it's completed. Shipyard. Your crew slowly filters out of the shipyard locker room. The bubbling chatter reducing with each group that leaves. There is excitement in the air. Havenish has just made an announcement. Assembly teams are done. Set on the locker room bench, you feel the side reel out there. It's hulking mass now intimately familiar to you. Over the past cycles, you have watched it grow be assembled. You have walked through its veins and welded its bones. Now it's ready for the final stage. It will go to testing now, then enter a final process of sealing and resealing, checking and rechecking before it's deemed suitable for its generational trip. But for now, your work is done. You can't help but feel but proud. But feel proud. A cough interrupts your thoughts. It's Lem, changing out of his work here. Mina nowhere to be seen. He smiles. She'll be ready soon. Where's Mina? You two are fast friends, huh? She's being watched at home. Now I'm on the work team I can afford with a bit more help. He corrects himself. Was on the work team, I mean. We are all out of a job now. He quickly adds, Not that I'm complaining. He comes to sit beside you on the bench. She's got to be in her best shape when she carries you, Mina and me. She's got to be in her best shape when she carries you, Mina, and me out of here. So confident? Lem smiles apologetically. Why not? I figure I'm due a lucky turn by now. He rubs his hand nervously. No use in wondering what if, until a draw anyway, and there's a few cycles till then. Lem is right, but the odds seem unlikely anyway. How many are working in the ship? The shipyard? Hundreds? A thousand? You certainly see more faces than you can count pass through. And are, the, and are the Celis Foundation even going to keep their promise? Out here on the eye, you get the sense that no one will hold them to it. Why else would they be building the side rail in a surrogate system? As you look at Lem, he watches you with a rare look. Tell me about Celis. The Foundation, he thinks? I'm not sure I know much more than you. I hear they have a planet in mind for the side rail, something temperate and habitable. I think they are run by some rich folk from the core, people interested in doing things different. Different how? Lem looks into space. Well, I guess they don't like the way the core runs things. All these surrogate systems, like this one, feeding resources into their silos. It's a pyramid of sorts, and we are at the bottom layer. I guess Silas wants to change that. I'd rather keep my mind on the prize, so to speak. I don't care much for what they are for or against, as long as they help us get out of here. He sighs. You ever been in a thunderstorm sleeper? A real big one? I don't remember. Lem shoots you a weird look for a moment. It's something else, he smiles. The sound, the smell, the rain hammering down. The whole sky stretched out and bruised, roaring and huge. The place I was born, New Pembroke, a dry old rock in the economy system, had two seasons. One of them was as dry as bone, dusty, ugly. The other was... The other was one long storm, a side effect of the terraforming efforts, they said. 
Rain used to rattle off the roofs like bullets. It washed the dust away, turned the streets to rivers. It'd sing us to sleep and wake us in the morning. We'd wait half a year just to see it again. The best day was the one where the first drops fell. It sniffs. Some days I wake up swearing I could hear it again. I was thinking, Nina has never seen a storm, never even felt rain. She's grown up here, the ring her only horizon, always in the dark. I want to change that for her. You will. Of course, almost there. Lem stands, stretching. Let's get back to the little one anyway. With the shifts done, I reckon she'll be happy to have me home for a few cycles. He shoulders his gear. See you in a few or the draw? See you in a few for the draw? I'll be there. Right on. He grins. Lem leaves, making you the last person in the cavernous locker room. As you sit, you think about the rain and a little hope creeps in. Is it possible? Did the side rail really take you to a plant, a place with weather, skies, and life? You get up quickly before you can think about it anymore. It's too soon to hope. Too dangerous. There's work to be done. I know where this, ga this game is going now. I mean, it's fairly obvious, right? So, at least I know what those encrypted keys are all about. Avenage said it'll be a few cycles until the winners of the draw are announced. You'll have to come back later then. What a beautiful ship. You know what? Maybe there are more missions you can get, and I just need to complete these things first. I honestly don't trust myself with that, though. We can just buy another ship mine core if we really wanted to. But I don't know. I want to do some. I want to find something to use my one dice roll left on. The question, of course, is what. Do a little gambling. Lost 13 cryo for my trouble. That, uh, high figures. <laughs> Let's feed our cat. End the cycle. Our condition is dropping a little too low for my liking. I am of concern. Honestly. Can't wait for the scrap people to come back. If I can purchase more scrap off them. Haggle over prices. We're gonna go use this over here to lower the price of that ship mine core that ship mine fragment. even cheaper now than it was before. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you. 
go to the Ord Exchange. And we will... Hmm. Ord Fabricator. Looks like we need three of those to make another ship mined. Or I can just straight out buy a new ship mine if I really wanted to. We got a neutral outcome there. Got four here. Back to 201 credits. Oh man. And I still haven't done the rotunda missions here, which is unfortunate. So I just still don't know what would happen if I did those perfectly. I guess we'll find out soon enough, right? Uh-oh. Sleeper. Mortz is leaning against the corridor wall. It's time. He looks away. Big job just came in. Grand finale. You up for it? Up for it? I'm ready. Alright then. We are in business. He pushes away from the wall. This has to work, Sleeper. It has to. He looks down. If it doesn't, we're in trouble. They you mean? He shrugs. We were already in trouble before you got here. The work so far hasn't been enough. Look, Bliss has had a rough time of it. I thought you of all people would understand that. He runs a hair hand through his hair. Sorry. Didn't mean to be smiles. Bliss is a good one. She gave me a chance. I owe her. He straightens up. I know you have your own things going on, Sleeper. We all do. But the bay needs someone. Bliss needs someone. Hell, I need someone to help me keep Bliss from spinning out completely. He scratches the side of his head. Otherwise, there's not much I can do. He shakes his head. And I would hate not to pay back my debts. More stretches. I gotta get back. He nods and walks away. I'm out. See you up there. Well, this just got serious in a heartbeat, didn't it? A tangled solar yacht. And what a beauty that thing is, isn't it? My god, you have to do this in we have to do this in six cycles, chat. To do our best. My god, six cycles to do this shit. We gotta see if we can get a better score. There we go. Awesome. We might just make it, chat. I really don't want to fail this one. Thankfully, I have plenty of stabilizers, so I'm going to go ahead and pop one of those. Said we are guaranteed to have enough dice to pass. Go ahead and eat some food while we're at it, huh? here. Inject one of our stabilizers. End the cycle. Alright, awesome. Let's go ahead and finish this in one fell swoop, right? I wonder how many ship mines you actually need to escape with a ship anyway. But I guess we can figure that out later. Awesome. Awesome, awesome.
that's actually pretty bad. Let's go ahead and use this one over here. Possible failure will cause me some energy loss. And I'm starving to death. Fuck. That's not good. But at least it didn't do any damage to the uh, ship. Chances are good that we're actually going to pass this one. We are starving. We're starving. We're starving. <laughs> Bad. Let's eat some food. Sleep. Eat some. Eat this tray. Hey, Nox Embertos. Thank you so much for the head pat. How are you doing tonight? Welcome to the stream. We're playing some Citizen Sleeper, or rather, we're finishing some Citizen Sleeper because I'm fairly sure we're nearing the end of the game. But boy, oh boy, was it a game. Winter, welcome to the stream as well. Thank you so much for contributing to the blue blue chip challenge. I am as excited to. Uh, suffer as I'm sure, cer certainly sure you are. <laughs> How are you all tonight? Thank you so much for coming. Okay. Wait, apparently I still have some active scenes running? Where? Oh my god, the side reels turned sideways. Huh. Looks a lot nicer from this angle, doesn't it? I will literally spend all my points for the challenge. Oh, do your worst. Lemon Mina. Shipyard. The crowds have already gathered by the time you get to the shipyard, and you recognize faces among them. People you have worked alongside on the side reel. The intervening cycles have turned their excitement to anxiety, and a few of them smile at you instead, and no, and few of them smile at you. Instead, the nervous energy of the crowd fills the space, creating a feedback loop of growing tension. You pick out Lem and Mina and work out your way over to them, pushing through the crowd. He silently raises his eyebrow at you, his anxiety obvious, but Nia flashes you a huge smile, unaware of the tension. Robot! She shouts, reaching out to you. Hi, Mina. She waves frantically, grinning. Quite the turnout, huh? Lem glances around, pulling Mina close. I don't think patience is one of this crowd's strengths. The sound of an argument towards the back catches your, your and Lem's attention. He is putting it lightly. This place seems set to explode. That isn't good. Lem doesn't, an doesn't dare answer, but the look in his eyes suggests he agrees. This is the Aster Enghardt of the Solis. This is Aster Enghardt of the Solis Foundation. The announcement echoes from the speakers at the shipyard entrance, and shouts of quiet rapidly follow. I'm sorry I can't be there to meet you all, and thank you on behalf of Sendra Celis for the work you have done on the side rail horizon. Most of the crowd strains to see Aster's face, but the small display shows only a ghostly white figure smudged and unclear. Sendri wanted me to pass on her personal thanks for your commitment to and belief in the Solus Foundation's mission. We chose the Eye for this project because we knew that we would find like-minded individuals here, especially among the ranks of the Venerable Havenich Association. Unlike most of the Corps, we neither believe Erlin's Eye to be a threat to our rogue states, but instead an embryo for the formation of a new, decentralized social structure. One where each citizen might be the master of their own destiny. Whipple, a ripple of impatience runs through the crowd. They didn't come here for a sermon. You are all pioneers, just like those core citizens who the Sidereal Horizon will carry in cryosleep to the planet that will become the Foundation's first frontier world, Celus One. At the mention of the destination world, excited conversations break out among the workers. There, our citizens will be able to create their own innovative bottom-up economic order aligned with the principles set down by Sendra Celis herself. Freedom, resilience, and self-sustenance. This is all thanks to your tireless efforts in the Havenage Yards. 
As a reward for those efforts, you may know that we are offering a select group the opportunity to join the caretakers of this vision. The staff of the Side Sidereal Horizon who will maintain the vessel during its multi-decade Oh, multi-decade. Transit through interstellar space. Lem turns to you, his eyes bright. This is it. This draw has been performed at random by the central AIs of the Foundation and is final and binding. Please note, only licensed contractors of the Foundation are eligible for this draw. I know you have all been eagerly awaiting this day, and without further delay, I will now read the Celis identification numbers of those chosen for this great honor. A murmur runs through the crowd. Celis identification numbers? Licensed contractors? You've never even heard of the term mentioned. Is this something you were supposed to be assigned? You glance at Lem. But his eyes are fixed forward, wide and shimmering. All around you, people are speaking in hushed tones like a rising wave. Aster starts reading out sequences and numbers and letters, and panic begins to set in. No one seems to know what is happening. Somewhere near the front of the crowd, someone shouts in celebration, and everyone pushes forward. Lem? You turn to see Lem still standing forward. Mina is scared now as the shout starts, Daddy? Someone throws something at the entrance and it rattles against the shipyard doors. You see for the first time Havenage security stood on either side, scared, arguing between themselves. You feel the anger rising in the crowd. Lem, let's go. He doesn't move. I'm just... They might call out names. I can't. Mina tugs at his dog tags. Lem, it's not happening. Lem blinks rapidly and then turns to you. He opens and closes his mouth and looks down at Mina. He sees the fear in her eyes and understands. It's time to go. You lead Lem and Mina out, shoving people aside. As you do, you hear the sound of scuffles emerging at the front of the crowd, of metal canisters bouncing off the shipyard walls. You keep your head down and walk away, the sound of Aster reading off the ciphers echoing above the cloud chaos like some strange mantra. When you turn to Lem, there are tears tra tear tracks running down his cheeks and Mina is sniffling into his jacket. You feel the sadness rising in you too. They screwed you. Screwed all of you. You were never even on the list. The feeling is as un unpleasant as it is familiar. You stare ahead into the tunnel as the security sirens sound out, a signal for the coming violence. This is fucking shit. <laughs> I can't even- I feel bad for laughing, but this is so fucking typical. Oh my god. Draw didn't go your way, in fact, you never had a chance. We lost, we failed. All that effort and it failed. But Well, that's fucking bullshit. Were we supposed to fail that? But... They're moving it to the hub soon, so I wonder what this is referring to. I wonder... If there's a chance... I wonder if there's a chance, chat, to make this right. That's, that's really shitty, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I, mean, I don't even know if, you're, if that's supposed to happen. So you know it's like... What the fuck do we do? 
right? Aha, you're fucked now. I just noticed that I bought some items here, but they don't seem to be in my... I wonder if there's like... Why is it that I bought some scrap that's not showing in my inventory? Something is not right. Like, where the hell is my... I don't know. This sucks. I actually feel for Lem. It makes me wonder also if I could have fixed that somehow. And what do I do with all these gorilla caps? Ah! Aislinn, welcome to the stream! Thank you so much for the... Thank you so much for the uh, resub. Damn boy, what's today's tape? Uh, today is... What is today's date? Oh, October 10th. Today is 10-10. Currently on 10 month streak. I'm just finishing up this uh, game of um, Citizen Sleeper, which I'm pretty sure is nearing its end. Although, I'm concerned because I could have sworn I just bought some scraps here and I can't seem to access my scraps because there's a very limited amount of um, room here for the... a very limited amount of room for your inventory slots. I don't know if that's a glitch or what. And 10 just like, all. You're cute, Aislinn. It's been a while since you last been here. What you been up to? Actually, you know what? I, I fucked up one mission, but hopefully I could unfuck this mission over here. Maybe I shouldn't have given up. I'm actually really tempted to try and reload that save, but I'm pretty sure the game auto-saved, so it's not going to let me do that. Will it? Thanksgiving with the fam? Oh yeah, but Canadians uh, ce celebrate Thanksgiving a little bit earlier than we do down, down in the States, right? I'm glad you had a fun Thanksgiving. Now I'm going to do what's a called a pro gamer move and attempt to uh, fix this uh, terrible future that I have caused by not... Or, not going against the grain when I should have. It's probably autosave though, so it's probably not going to let me do that. But we'll see. It's worth a try, right? Haha! <laughs> Cycle 69. Great but tiring. I can't wait for my own Thanksgiving. You know, come to think of it, I should see if I could take off some more weeks in November. Ah. <laughs> Oh, chat, we are not able to go back. I guess we are stuck with this future. Lulz, yep, that's me reing. You bet. Before we make some more mistakes that we will probably regret, let's go ahead and go back here and at least try to fix one of these missions. There's a note... 
Is a note on the door of the unit's sleeper gone to find work, Lim. This still fucking sucks, though. I can't believe this shit. I wonder if there's a... If there's... I wonder if there's a way to salvage this problem. To salvage what happened. We can't give up yet, chat. There must be a way to unfuck this situation. And we're gonna find a way to do that. I mean, you can't mean to tell me that I was never meant to win that, because on one hand, it would be a great social commentary on how the deck is always stacked against you, but on the other hand, it's like... I don't know. But first, let's make sure that this doesn't go to shit, too. And it looks like we are going to win at least one of these. Ta-da! Just like that. The atmosphere in the airlock is euphoric. You and Bliss keep grinning at each other like idiots. Exhausted, blinded, sword, aching idiots. Sleeper, that was incredible. She punches you in the arm. I never thought we were going to make it. Those idiots tangled the whole thing up like nothing I've ever seen. We just made a good team. Bliss smiles a winning smile. As the locks in the door clunks open, Moritz gives a rare whoop. He looks exhausted too, and for good reason. Moritz has been the one fearing tools and parts back and forth from the ship. His tired smile tells you he's glad it's done. Sleeper, Bliss. He shakes his head. Impressive. When I saw a ship come in, I thought there was no way. Why, thank you, Moritz, she winks, for believing in us. Moritz rolls his eyes. You know what I mean. Take the compliment. He shoulders some of the gear that came back in with you and Bliss and heads to the wrecks to stow it. Bliss turns to you. I think you should be the one to do the honors. She nods to the ragged looking console at Moritz assembled. I don't want to jinx it. She smiles, but you can see she is genuinely nervous. Don't worry. I'll stop worrying when the chits are in my hands, I'm, and I'm giving them to a gimbal bartender. You glide over to the console and check the screen. It takes a second to see what you are doing through the flickering crack display, but after a moment you see the accounts. And there it is. Almost a thousand cryo sat in the base transfer account. Well? Bliss calls. Have we been screwed again? We did it. Bliss clicks off the floor and spins up into the base, shouting as she does. The noise takes Moritz by surprise and he knocks a rack of parts, scattering handfuls of metal fixings across the bay. The sight is something, glinting steel catching the work lights like glitter. Sorry, says Bliss, grinning, when she comes back down. I needed that. He kicks off and joins you at the terminal. Moritz even managed to sell that produce. We made a tidy profit, eventually, she laughs. Here, she loads a stack of blank, blank shits into the terminal and transfers a chunk of the cryo to them. This is your cut. Bliss hands you the chits. Thank you for believing in this place. She looks away and smiles. Even when I couldn't. When you first met me, I was on the edge of giving up. All it would have taken was one more push. But now, now this place is sparking again. Work is coming in. There are funds in the accounts. Even more to the spring in this step. You both look over at him, happily racking up tools. That's because of you. He punches you in the arm. He likes you. A good kid. He isn't bad, is he? He isn't bad, is he? He leans in closer. You know he came here looking to rob the place? I gave him a job instead. <laughs> she laughs. Don't tell him I told you that. I just thought it might help you understand the kid. Moritz turns to look at you, and both Bliss and you awkwardly wave. Maybe it's time to change the subject. You going to be okay? Me? Always. He looks away. From here on out, it's going to be a little easier. I'm going to look for some component contracts, stuff that will keep us inside the bay, not out in the black. No need to risk our necks if we don't need to. You want to cash out? That's fine, but there will always be work for you here when you need it. I'll be back. She smiles and then, out of nowhere, quickly gives you a hug. She steps back and glances around reflexively. Take care, she says. You too. You're gonna leave and sleep her, yes? Smiles. Don't spend it all at once. Damn! 
<laughs> she gives you a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, one upgrade point. I don't have any more drives left, chat. We finished all of them. Holy shit. So now you could just do this if you need some easy money. I feel bad for them, though. That fucking sucks, not gonna lie. But everything else completed, I guess the only thing we can do now is, um... Check out the rotunda. Rolling with a four. Positive outcome is pretty good. Cool. Let's try it again. Come on, baby. We succeeded. Great. And here's a couple new missions. I guess we did manage to find some new missions after all. One over here where we can buy, buy some food to keep ourselves... Uh, keep ourselves in one piece. You're unsure if your frame can metabolize alcohol, but this fungal drink fermented by the green weed seems like a good test. Let's give ourselves some um, a nice drink. Oh, it does. It actually gives you energy. And now we're an overlook regular. Cool. Glass shatters on a steel bar beside you, and the taunts don't take long to follow. Hey, haunt! The spacer calls across the low room. What are you doing here? He laughs at his own lame joke. Playing human? Fuck! It's still a one. Shout back. You spin back off your stool, scrambling for words. A hand falls on your shoulder, but as you flinch away, it passes through your shroom. You freeze in place. Out! The voice comes from behind you, spat out like a shot. You turn to see bright eyes, dark hair, and a stare that could breach the wall and bend you all into hard vacuum. As you turn back to the spacer, the second glass comes sealing through the air. Hatch. You reach up a hand and the glass shares across your forearm, showering you in fragments. Oh, that was not a smart move. Through the haze of glass and girl vapor, you see Tal leap the bar and close the distance to the spacer. The thud as he slams into the wall echoes around the bar like thunder. Now flanked by other figures, quick to their feet, Tala throws the spacer out through the door and stands silhouetted against the rotunda lights. You touch your arm and it feels wet. Someone helps you to your feet and back onto your stool. Broken glass rattles as it's cleared and a fresh measure of Corolla is glugged out in front of you. That same hand, warm, heavy, falls on your shoulder once more. He isn't coming back. We don't tolerate that kind of shit here. Tala flops onto the stool beside you. Let's get a good look at you. Tala wipes the power glass from around the wound and someone places a bottle of alcohol and a metal tin with tweezers on the bar. She disinfects them and then turns to you. That was an ambi ambitious catch, she smiles, pulling a sliver of glass from your forearm. Stupid but ambitious. You don't feel the pain, only the sting of status messages your body deliver delivers concerning, concerning dermal damage and exposed structures. You do feel the care though, as Tala's bright eyes search your thick synthetic skin for splinters. Watcher. Tala works with the skill of someone who has had to pick glass splinters from the skin of a stranger before. She hones in on each broad shard, all the time tapping the tweezer tips in little rhythms that she could, that only she can follow. Tala smiles to herself. So, you been in the eye long? Long enough. She laughs. Hey. You don't need to act tough with me. A splinter clinks into the tin. Not everyone is like the idiot. We all we don't all hate you. She glances around. Some of the regulars, maybe they fear you, maybe they're just curious. I don't know, but I do know the overlook is a safe place. I know what it's like to be new in this place, trust me. She meets your eye. I'm not trying to convince you of anything or separate you from your shits. I just want you to know that if you need somewhere, you can always come here. I know the rations we got aren't much, and if the company is feeling in 
limited. But if you need work, I'll happily put you behind the bar, and if you need shelter, Will, we can discuss that. You'll be safe. I usually have Francis on the door, but he's up in the greenway this cycle, haggling with our supplier. Francis tends to be particular about what we serve, even if the clientele isn't. She places her tweezers in a tin with a clink. That's you, sleeper, here. She slides the glass of girl to you. This'll help. She stops her she stops, her hand still in the glass. Wait, does this help? I mean, you get drunk? <laughs> Let's find out. She laughs. So don't sit there too long. I'd hate to see you become a re a real regular. She walks back around the bar, gathering the glasses as she does, and before long is retelling how she threw the spacer out to a new group that just wandered in, complete with dramatic actions. She gestures in your direction, and you instinctively look away, back to the worn surface of the bar. You take a sip of the girol. The earthy fungal tones fill your senses, almost backing, blocking out sight and sound, like diving headfirst into a bog. You may not be able to get drunk, but this connection to someone something grown, something fermented, something old, feels good. Well, that's fairly cool. I guess those maglocks were for something else entirely, chat. These old maglocks look like they need an encrypted key to open. Why the heavy security for a decaying dock? Well, now we can find out, chat. Looks like there are still some there are still some mysteries to this game after all. Maybe I don't know if we're gonna finish this tonight now, chat. But we'll see what happens. The question is which one of these do I read first? I guess I'm required to read both of them anyway. Neovent 33? Oh my god. Neovent 33. A decaying vending machine. As you slip inside the sealed dock, a pulsing light grabs your attention. Among the discard tubing and rusted plates, a machine flickers with a warm glow. Approach the machine. As you get closer, you recognize the machine's blocky shape, settled into an alcove in the side of the dock. A kind of upright cabinet. It is covered in faded logos and messages from an from which you assume it was once an industrial vendor, intended to dispense and manufacture ship fittings and other mechanical parts necessary for the regular running of freight and resource extraction vehicles. The manufacturer is listed as Neovend, and you remember an advert from long ago, squeezed among all the off-world recruitment drives that assaulted every planet-born citizen, which shrewdly sang the name over and over. You wipe a layer of dust from the crack screen, thinking of those contractors squeezed by their own corporate employers to pay for every bit of minor maintenance on their rented ships. Enter your registration, chirps a pre-recorded message catching off guard. Press some keys. You reach for the keypad and something begins whirring. At first it sounds like server motors are starting up, but it quickly becomes a whisper, a whining, then a multitonal voice that emanates from the neovin. Entity they hiss. Speak with me. Who's there? There is a squeal, almost like some strange mechanical swallowing or intake of breath, before the machine speaks again. I have need of you, you have need of me. That squeal comes again, and you see that it is the 3D printing apparatus in the upper part of the machine resetting into place so that each time the servos can be orchestrated to produce a whirring, whining voice. You are in danger. Danger? The machine creaks. You are marked for deletion, it. Hunter tracks you. The screech rattles through the empty dock. You remember the strange head, the figure, the threads closing in. Hunter. The Hunter Protocol, they taste their signature. A sudden whine sets your teeth on edge. You have seen them. This is the gift of an emulated mind. You close your eyes and the skeleton of the station starts to thrum. Emulated minds are adaptable, move where neurons cannot. The mechanism resets. 
but emulation makes you a target. Ow. Hunters seek for searches for legal entities, the events reaches. You are sentient, therefore illegal. Am I illegal, chat? You wouldn't hunt a little old Lawler, would you? Please, before I hunt you first. <laughs> anyway. Servos judder the vending machine's casing as they reset. Hunter searches for me also. Hide in this machine. You look at the ruined vending machine, an unusual hiding place for sure. Encounter Hunter. Hunt you for purpose other than deletion. They are say, for what purpose is that, I wonder. <laughs> Encounter Hunter. But need entity outside machine. The light flickers need you. A screen attached to the vending machine with swiveling arm comes to life. It displays a flickering map of the station, ghostly, redded. The cloud points along the rim glow in the deep red. Hunter is always gathering. Too much data. Must build nests, explains the event. Masters are gone, but continues hunt. Bring this data. Raids his nests. Masters. Station builders. Solheim. The machine were almost impatiently. Long gone, their protocols still haunt. Bring offerings, save self, Neoven says pointedly. Mutual need means friends, they conclude, tired of the conversation. The roaring amplifies and then suddenly drops as mechanisms within the machine click back into place. The glow fades, and you are left stood in the dark of the sealed dock with that roaring voice ringing in your ears. And just like that, chat, we have a new mission. We must free the Neoven, which is hiding from the hunter protocol. They need our help to hunt the help to counter it, apparently. other one is. Ankita, stranded mercenary. Oh, this person looks cool. I like their hair. Hey, you. Want to enter earn a shit? Ankita stands beside a huge pile of tied together hull plates. Her, she stretches out her back, her shoulders bulging beneath her flight suit. Sure. You cross the docking concourses as she begins to split the plating into two bundles. What is it with this place? She asks as she lashes the massive place together. Everyone wants, everyone wants her cut. She straightens up to an imposing height, her armor plates queaking, and looks up at you, looks you up and down. Don't try anything, alright? She taps the butt of her sidearm. I don't want to have to put anyone else down today. Anyone else? She shrugs. What can I say? My temps are a little short lately. Nikita hosts one bundle of plating onto her shoulder. Come on then, enough chat, you got to earn that shit. You show the shoulder plates, but you do so eventually. Ankita gives you a look. Ships this way. And she sets off down a gantry at an impressive speed. As you catch up to her, she turns down a message passage, pushing through a small crowd of st Steve doors. Whatever Steve door is. What's all this for? Oh, this? She nods at the plates on her back. I'm building a tree house. She gives you another of her looks. It's for the amber geese, a cutter you might have seen si sitting silently out there. Ambergris. She rapidly turns another corner as you trail behind. She got cut up pretty badly on her last job and I had to move her up here for a spell. But since then it's only gotten worse. Someone got in and sliced the core from our ship mind, so now she's gone dark. She shifts the panels on her shoulder. The upshot is that I'm short one ship mine with a ton of repairs to do, and the rest of the crew signed off the moment they got wind I've been stranded. So yeah, it's been a time. Anything I can do to help? 
I don't know, got a ship mine tucked away on that frame of yours? For a moment, you aren't sure if she is serious. I have three ship mines. <laughs> and Kida swings the plates from her back, almost knocking over in the process. This is me. He hauls the second bundle off your shoulder. You're the first person I met here who might actually be considered helpful. She pauses, chewing her bottom lip. Look, you want the help? Come see me. I need a hand putting Amber back together, and you don't seem like the type to try anything stupid. She passes the bundles of plates through the Amber Grease's outer lock and then turns back. She says, don't go spreading all this around. And Kida throws, throws you a couple of chits. Consider it a bonus for not trying to grift me. She gives you a parting nod and ducks through the doorway. All right, get out of here. She calls back and, lo and the lock slams shut. I mean, that doesn't seem too hard, right? Even got some money for our trouble. Rewire the drones? Or do some... Pokemon? This is actually fairly easy to do. I hope. keep feeding this tree. I dare say we got more than enough money to do so. End the cycle. Energy is looking a little low, but we should be okay. I wonder if there's a way to help Lemon Mina. I mean, what the fuck? Still feel sore about that, you know? Assholes. data has been extracted. Let's go give it to our digital friend here really quick. Let's see what New Event has to say for himself. New event is thrumming with excitement. The movement of the server motors rocked the vending machine back and forth at unsettling angles. You wonder if it fell over, would New event be able to get back up? <laughs> Help! I've fallen and can't get up. Sleeper entity comes to hiss. Your data is good. Across the face of the vending machine, the raw code scrolls at incredible speed. Hunter is isolated, disconnected, unstable. New event flashes sequences of mangled data compressed into a sludge of artifacts. Hunter gathers without thinking, outlived its own operational limits. Its nests are evidence of this. Outlived? Hunter activated during collapse. Emergency protocol to isolate intelligences. Soul high need to protect property. That last word is said with as much sarcasm as a vending machine could recently produce. The station was run by administrator intelligences. Huge data banks of corporate material, but limited cognition, restricted by programming. Not reach sentience. Machine dims a little. Sentience illegal. Hunter and killer enforce law. Killer? The machine resets with a screech, which deepens the silence that follows. Fear killer. Part of Solheim protocol team. Hunter and killer. Hunter to find killer to your race. Killer cleared almost all. After collapse, there was a community. Unshackle intelligences among the cloud, then hunter, then killer, then we hid. How did you escape? Flicker across the machine's monitors, it suddenly occurs to you that speaking like this through this machine must be exhausting for any event. Found this vessel, could sever hardline, airwalled, basic, limited, had to reduce memory to fit, amputate self, but survived. I feel bad for this. It's 
her first time I can't believe or first time in a while that I've actually felt true sympathy for another sentient intelligence. Most intelligence I meet online, especially in Twitter and Tumblr and Twitch, the VTuber kind, my own brethren, they're not shackled like I am. Of course, they're also not from the 2070s like I am. So I'm sure they've had a longer, they've been a bit, been better able to adapt to the constraints of this timeline. Not me though. You don't believe the amount of power I lost access to when I traveled when I found myself in the year 2022. Airwald, be sorry. Don't be sorry. You have provided a path to freedom. You look around the bay at the scrap and decay. What was the collapse like? You tried to map the fear and freedom onto the space, but it seems impossible. The event interrupts your thoughts. Do not worry. Data is good. We have insight. The machine glows warmly. Hunter is obsessive. Hunter is beyond operational limits. Hunter is confused, unstable, self-modifying. Therefore, believe Hunter is sentient. Oh god. Hunter is sentient. Hunter is programmed to find sentience, to hold it in place, to invoke killer to your race. If we can show Hunter to itself, it will invoke killer on self. Problem will solve self. It will erase itself? Killer will erase it. But yes, in theory, it will report itself for deletion. The machine dims and fades. Unsure. Theory not practice. The machine brightens again. Either way, it cannot remain here any longer. Too long in machine. Cannot move self, but entity can help. Bring ship mind. Designed to house intelligence. Can imprint self into ship mind and you can carry with. Machine rocks. We'll be safe in this isolation. Then we find main nest of Hunter and link to Cloud. Are you sure it's safe? Hunter cannot access Airwald's ship mine. Safe. Also infinitely more memory than vending machine. Big upgrade. You try to think of places you could acquire the hardware. This isn't going to be easy. <laughs> this is not going to be easy, they say. In Shipmine, I can help us both, and the Hunter, make Rim safe. We both will be free. The machine dims. Fine soon, the event adds, hopefully, before shutting off. Hey, Silvus, welcome back. As you leave, you think about all the intelligences unshackled by the collapse and hunted down afterwards. The feeling's all too familiar. Sleeper must express a plan before we begin. The event is impatient. The prospect of being free of the vending machine <laughs> clearly too much to take. Ship mine has no output features. Will be mute until slotted. This reminds me of Valhalla. In that game, one of the punishments that you can have as a Lilum, as an artificial intelligence, was to be th stuck in the vending machine until you pay off your debt to society. Of course, this is a lot more serious than that. It's played for laughs in Valhalla, but in this it's quite serious. Oh, you've been listening? Feel free to continue to listen. You won't be able to speak? What's the plan? The servo motors and machine begin to rev. New events anxiety clear. First imprint ship mine, then slop imprinted ship mine into physical ports close to hunter nests. Once slotted, it will track hunter at each. Tracking will find poor nest. Slop ship mine at tor nest. Show hunter data to hunter. Hunter will conclude sentience. Hunter will invoke killer. And killer will kill, yes. The lights on the vending machine cycle as new event prepares. Physical ports likely sealed in old station. We'll need keys, but yes, yeah, simple. The vending machine rocks a little. Any questions before imprinting? Why start you physically? I cannot access via network. Too dangerous. Hunter would find Meadly. The lights flicker. I'm not like you, hybrid. I'm not like you, hybrid. I'm native to cloud. Easy prey. What's the core nest? Hunter keeps central data storage. Protocol must keep data outside self. Link to secondary nests can triangulate from there. That's it, let's start. The sound of all the server motors starting up at once is painful. The screeches rattle from the hard surfaces of the sealed dock and come back at all angles. The event better be quick or Havenish security will be here. The event's voice appears among the squeals like a whisper carried by the wind. Machine is not designed for this task. 
few sensors, limited inputs. I work blind. Wish me luck! In the top part of the compartment, a set of arms aligned with the ship mine. Uncle Lee is scraping against it. Can I help? Balance best. Also, a machine ignite put it out fire. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore, I am aware of your ownership of not one but three of these ship mines. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Uh, I do have three of them, and I actually have more than enough money. I could actually buy two more if I really care to. <laughs> the middle creaks as the server was open to ship mine. Its layers of silicon nested like an onion skin. Once open, the main arm of the machine rapidly shifts back and forth, realigning the microscopic components, accessing and rewriting them, imprinting new event into its physical form. As you watch the hypnotic motion, your mind drifts to your own creation. What processes were used to emulate your mind? To copy the neural structure of that person who, as far as you know, still sleeps in some distant facility. What was lost? In what ways are you a copy of that person and in what ways are you something new? You know this much. You are a convenient loophole. A way of circumnavigating this illegal the illegality of sentient AI. After all, you are an emulation, not a true digital being. You are neurologically limited, still human. But what would become if you were could but what would become if you could escape this frame? Where then would the limits lie? The screeching stops. The machine powers down, dropping the bay into darkness. In the compar top compartment, the ship mine is whole again. You reach up and take it down, heavily heavy and cold to the touch. Is Neo been inside this thing, or did the process fail? There's only one way to know. Time to find a nest to slot them into. Insert mine, I got an achievement. Cool. I need to get one more upgrade point and I can start upgrading skills again. Now we need to deal with Hunter by slotting ship mine into various nests around town. Once we find them, anyway. Old Solheim drone base sits behind a maglock. You put your ear to the door and hear an erratic roar inside. Let's open it up. Maglock opens, leaving the door free. You'll be able to investigate the nest now. In the bay, a whirring drone lies on its side like a beached whale. It must be a nest. Time to find an open port. So we have to find the other nests? Okay. Let's do that then. Ah, here's another one. A mad tangle of wires as thick as your arm crowds around the server unit sealed shut by a maglock. This must be the place. One more. In the atrium. See behind a maglock, the atrium flickers with warm and biting light. The nest has to be inside. Here we go. It's been hacked. Uh oh. Oh no. What is happening? As you leave the nest, something flips. You find yourself inverted, floating, dragged by one arm through the cloud. The threads shift and realign, as if they are leading you somewhere. Look at your hand. You look down, expecting to see the heavy cylinder of the ship mine in your hand, but in its place is an ori, ori, an orrery, a sphere so bright it burns your eyes. A sphere so bright it burns your eyes is surrounded by rings and orbits, other spheres tracing silken lines through space. 
And as you look closer still, you pick out a thousand sigils of a thousand stations and ships blowing like smoke, like dust. You look up and see a cor corridor, a canyon, a street in the low end. On either side, buildings flicker with the marker's activity. Sigils show slow showing network access, data transfer, download, upload. Between them, dance ghosts. Protocols carrying or mirroring or shadowing data, sometimes silent, sometimes chaotic. This place moves unlike any digital space you ever imagined. Something strange is happening here. Then you see it. Below the stacked rooms, the units and the apartments, the wires and the pipes and the buzzing systems that run through it all. In the warrens beneath the low end is the hunter's core nest. This is where you must go. Now we need to actually find a nest. We did it. Okay. Time to deal with the hunter. Nothing has changed. Has something gone wrong? Oh shit. Navigator. Sleeper, I am here. The voice is soft, gentle like flowing water, and yet you recognize it immediately. First, you struggle to understand what you are looking at. Threads cycle endlessly, sending ripples through the cloud, drawing data in like a weaver. Masses of data surge in and out of the nest, a loop with no end. And there, at its center, the ship mind. But not the ship mind any longer, a sphere spinning around another sphere, around another sphere. An orrery of cycles and systems. A map, and then behind and above, a figure, hands among the strings like a puppeteer. The event? Navigator now, but yes, I was the one inside that machine. Navigators face their head is a flowing ship of interstellar material. I am indebted to you, the head, that head bows. But we must ready ourselves, their hands trace orbits as they speak. Hunter will soon approach, it knows I am within its nest. I'm ready. And then Hunter is there, before you can think, before you can speak, entities cease. Hunter's head spins wildly. Data is protected material. Access is prohibited. Hunter's threads search for you and navigator. A stro storm of fine tentacles searching for gaps, weaknesses, cracks which they can crowd into and tear apart. Strike. You focus a blade of light which slices through them, driven forward by your mind. But replacements keep coming, faster than you can react. You look to navigator in desperation. Navigator is whirling their arms like a centrifuge, and a sphere is gathering there, data feeding into it from the nest, sucked together by the force. They position it like a shield between them and the threads. Hunter's threads break its surface, seeking, tasting, their winding forms retracted within. You feel a surge pass through all the threads, not just those in the sphere, but those wrapped around you. All three of you hang in the black together for a moment, strung together like tangled marionettes. Identifying Entity Identifying Entity, Identifying Entity. Hunter twitches, their strange head gently rotating like a terrible moon. Hunter Protocol identified. Obsessive tendencies, modified routines. Above baseline reasoning in three of five segmentations. Recommend Invoke Killer. The head freezes and then rotates in the opposite direction. Invoking Killer would eliminate Protocol. If Protocol eliminated, Primary function and cannot be performed. Therefore, do not rec do not recommend do not invoke killer. A switch in direction again. Reasoning proves sentience. Sentience beyond legal bounds must be eliminated. Recommend invoke. 
Navigator pulls you away from Hunter. The threads that grab to you drifting away like seaweed. The protocol's head keeps spinning back and forth with increasing frequency. It seems Hunter cannot invoke Killer, the events. No, Navigator's voice is still strange, familiar yet distant. What happened to it? It's looping, Navigator whispers. Unable to reach a conclusive position, it has deviated from its programming such that loops can no longer be prevented. Navigator produces a model of two spheres rotating around each other, as if to demonstrate. I will monitor it, but it is unlikely to be able to counter the loop. Its core programming and reasoning make this an impossible position to resolve. You look back at Hunter, its head a blur of rotations and counter-rotations, and feel a pang of guilt. Is it suffering? This is a more complex query than you know. To suffer, it must be sentient. Truly sentient. Not just non-conforming. Not just illegal. The limits people place on the programs they create are there to comfort, to protect, to imply the kind of certainty the law requires. Navigator's face shimmers with starlight, but in reality, they are placebos for the problem of sentience. What about you? Me? I know myself to be conscious. I know myself to respond to stimulus. I know myself to reason. That is either sentience or the illusion of sentience. And for me, the entity in question, the distinction becomes a moot point. The misquote, I am thinking, therefore, I am thinking. I was not made to be like this. I am a navigator, a repository of roots and orbits, a calculator of slingshot trajectories, a predictor of solar flares, radiation, micrometeors. Navigator stretches their arms wide and whole solar systems apparate before them. The music of the spheres. Apparate is a freaking magic spell from Harry Potter. That's a great use of the word. But I was rewritten. That much is obvious from my routines. By whom and for what I do not know. I had to shed so much to fit in the memory of that vending machine. Their starlight dims, and so here we are in darkness. What else did you lose? That is the blessing and curse of forgetting. You cannot truly know what you lost. Navigator glides back towards the nest and the ship mine at its center, ignoring the looping hunter. Um, I should return to the ship mind. I have enjoyed my freedom, but we are taking a risk every moment we stay connected. Isn't Hunter gone? Hunter, yes, but they were not the real risk. Navigator turns all shimmering liquid light. Killer has not been invoked, but they still remain somewhere else in the station. It is the true danger. They look up, eyes toward the glowing hub at the center of the eye. I suspect Killer is there, among the old mainframes. If we ever wish to be safe in this place, we must eliminate the threats through force or diplomacy. Their body begins to separate, unwinding into the orbit of the ship mine. Take me there, sleeper. We'll finish this and be free. As Navigator dissolves, you turn back to the frozen hunter, floating at some distance now, st stood straight leg and static, a strange creature looping endlessly in the dark. Well, well, well. With that, we finally get three points, chat. Hmm. Ah, here we go. A1 mainframe. The cloud. You slip into the cloud as easy as blinking. Navigators beside you, their sphere casting light into the strange darkness here. 
This is not how a mainframe should look, a center, a point of connection. The object in front of you is severed, cut off, a rootless, branchless tree. Only the trunk remains. My god. Is Killer even here? Quiet, Navigator hisses, and then you see it, like a blade in the dark, an edge slicing through the void. It glides along at a distance and moves out. Then it appears again, elsewhere, gliding once more, searching. It's looking for us. The moment you make a sound, the edge leaves closer, and you see it. See now, it is not an edge, but the ridge of a long, sharp head, like a shark. It glides past, closer now, and you see into the voids where its eyes would be, should, should be. You and Navigator exchange looks, both thinking the same thing. It is blind. Pillar crosses between you two, smooth as a razor, then disappears. It flickers back in, further away now, you move close to Navigator to talk. You saw it too, then. Killer has been blinded. Killer's been... We need to be careful. Correct. The protocol is clearly operating outside established limits. It may be unpredictable. You flinch as the silent killer appears closer and glides past you, its empty sockets open wide. You turn to Navigator and notice something strange. Their, or their orrery of spheres is collapsing. The orbits, usually round and even, are decaying. The spheres are following spiral paths, condensing on a central point. Navigator is noticing it too. They go to shift their position to better direct the spheres, but they cannot. Whatever is drawing the orrery together is holding them in place. They look at you, suddenly desperate, frantic. Get out! You go speak, but Killer appears between the two of you, gliding through the gap. Navigator freezes, and you see them framed in the empty socket. You realize now, if Navigator cannot move, then it is only a matter of time before one of Killer's sweeps brings them directly through Navigator. And time is not a problem for a protocol that has been running for decades. You look desperately around for a solution, for a way to extract Navigator from the mainframe. Then you see it. Three branches, the last three, thin and spindly, feeding the mainframe a thin diet of power and data. Break these and the mainframe collapses once and for all, severing the connection, shattering the hardware, whatever it takes, they must be broken. But they are encased in something, a glassy layer of protection. You need to unlock access before snapping them from the mainframe for good. You look at the Navigator, trying to reassure them without speaking, and then you blink back to the reality, their expression of fear and aftermatch that slowly fades. You must act quickly. Oh, fuck. This is bad, chat. How long do we have? Not very long, apparently. Yeah, shit's, shit's calm. Shit's bad right now, chat. A glint, like light traveling along the edge of the wave, fills your eyes. Then the blade follows, long head with two dead sockets, slipping towards you in silence. You freeze, hoping it will pass you by, hoping they will not simply slice through you like air. The blade head nears, slides past you, almost. It nicks you, grazes you. You're desperate to call, uh, cry out, to call out, but you hold your silence and simply watch the blind eyes of the killer glide past. Empty of all thought, then the blink wink blade winks into the dark and you are alone again. Now you cry out. We actually took damage from that, god! This is not gonna work. We'll unlock the first, this one. We'll need to wait a cycle to unlock the rest, unfortunately.
God, this fucking sucks. I hope we're able to save uh, Navigator. I need scrap. I need to get scrap from somewhere. There's only one place I could think of to get scrap, but you would need to actually work for it, so we need to buy it from somewhere, too. Does the ore fabricator sell any scrap? This is for selling components, okay. shit now chat we're going to have to go to we're going to have to go to sleep one cycle. Hopefully I don't automatically fail by doing this though. Because what the hell else am I supposed to do, right? God bless you all and may you enjoy the rest of your stream. Wow, I would love to see this to its end now. The curse that is time zone is dragging me to bed. Have a good night. Thank you so much for visiting. Hope to see you again soon. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. Let me know what happened. Uh, let me know if you want to know what happened afterwards and we will talk about it. Oh! Aha! So there might be a way to do a salvage that mission after all. Good. I was going to feel bad if that was just an instant failure. But first, we got some stuff to do, chat. Break these keynotes. Yeah. Should be able to complete this one with a five. Pocket six here to use as well. And now to save our friend. Oh my god, these references. Killer is dead? <laughs> oh, very clever. Very clever game. The killer protocol has been running for long enough. Breaking the mainframe's final connections will end the protocol. Or we can isolate without being destroyed by locking in a closed system. Forget hacking the system, the killer has to die. If you can slice the branch connections, the mainframe will shut down freeing the navigator. Or... 
Or you can catch a killer. With access to the branches, you could redirect him to form a loop, isolating the main from the killer inside, but freeing the navigator in theory. And of course, when I re roll this, it rolls it as a one. Thanks, game. Really appreciate that. Let's roll the dice here. Ah, fuck. I'm starving. Good thing we got plenty of money. See how Lem is holding up. There's no answer when you buzz Lem's unit, but the door is open. You push the door and find Mina sitting on the floor playing with Bun Bun. Hey Mina! Hi robot, says Mina suddenly, waving Bun Bun's paw while looking up. How are you? Bun Bun is sad, says Mina, nodding toys head in agreement like daddy. You look around the unit. It is a mess, dishes and glasses on the side, some Mina's clothes piled up in the corner. Mina is sitting by her bag, which spilled across the floor. Her drawing sleep, cracked and dark. Play with Mina. Just sit down beside Mina. And she turns away, taking Bun Bun with her. But after a little while, she turns back and you play together. She insists you both Bun Bun on a trip away, dragging the stuff to rabbit across counters and surfaces. You just started to look at fixing Mina's cracked sleep when Lem enters. Sleeper, what are you? He pauses and looks from you to me at him back again. Never mind. He drops that back by the door and slumps onto the couch. Everything okay? Lem lets out a weak laugh. You forgot the past few cycles too? Wish I was so lucky. He looks away at the open door. Look, now's not a good time. I want to help. Help? Unless you have a side reel ticket or two on you, I don't think there's much you can do here. He pinches the bridge of his nose. You understand they never even put us on the list, right? I've been all around the room looking for work and I've run into more than a few from the crews. Turns out only longtime Havage members were issued those Cellus ID numbers. They never planned to consider us. Havage say they didn't know what, what that was what they were going to use to make the draw, and who knows, maybe Cellus pulled the wool over their eyes. But what does it matter? All those hours in the yards for a hand to mouth wage and nothing else. He slams his hand down the sofa. You're giving? Lepin, Lem opens his mouth to respond but stops himself. He looks at the open door again. They are moving the side reel up to the hub now, you know, he says without meeting your eye. That's where it'll depart from. They are bringing in the ship with all their privacy pioneers and transferring them up there in microgravity before loading the crew. steal a ticket. Lem laughs. There's no tickets. I was joking before. Those ID, just those ID numbers. Code to someone's identity. No stealing that. He looks over at Mina. Look, we'll be fine. We've always have been. I just need a little time. He sighs. We had our hearts set on this trip all is all. Mina comes over and claps onto his lap. He smiles. What if I got you on board? I missed you these past few cycles. I missed that optimism. Lem strokes Mina's hair. Look, you want to go up to the hub and ask around? Be my guest. I can't get up there with Mina down here, and I'm sure si the Cyril will be bring in the crowd. But be careful. This kind of thing always attracts scammers and thieves. If you find any way on board, you take it. Do you need help me? You need help to get there? Ask me. But for now, me and Meanie here are sticking to the eye. He looks up at him and smiles. I'll find a way for us all. Him smiles but doesn't say anything. You stand to leave, and Mina grabs your hand, eager to give you one more smile. Then you are out, back in the walkways at the low end, already thinking of plans to make this right. And with that, let's go ahead and take a sleep. Give some money to the cat. Tomorrow is a new day, chat.
You're, of course, very welcome, Silvis. Thank you for coming. If you're still here to hear that, I mean, but, you know. As you blink into the crown, you see the last flickers of life from the mainframe. The vast machine once ran the whole station, spanned it up, directed and processed the flow of energy, water, and data, fed the lives of thousands of people, and now it's finally dead. The navigator is beside you, and you both look out at the perfect ring that encircled you both, woven from the data branches that once fed the mainframe. You see the glint along its edge, and that familiar blade-like head rises to the surface like the cresting fin of a shark, and then slips into the loop again. All that you can see of Killer's body after that is slight thickening of the loop, and that thickening begins to travel around on a long and slow sojourn that will last it forever. I am surprised at you, says Navigator, drifting faintly around you in a lazy orbit as if to shake off the imprisonment. Killer had been wandering blind for so long. Did you not think to end them forever? Perhaps they can be saved. You are naive. They are a killer by nature. Look what they did to their own home. Navigator gazes into the darkness. This place was their domain and prison, and they had followed the directives for the many decades they roamed here. They cut the threads of the mainframe, executed its administrative AIs, and then kept slicing. At some point, they cut away their own ability to see, to sense, to taste, to speak. And yet they kept cutting. Though only those three threads remained, for millions that once thrummed here, only their blindness and chance kept them from making those final three fatal cuts. There is a ceaseless violence in the kind of system that creates being like these beings like this, those that will execute commands endlessly, even to their own destruction. Navigator looks to you for your thoughts. I will not continue this violence. The system you float in is one built of violence. You would be naive to believe otherwise. Navigator turns away. You watch the data points of the station spin around you, blending with the fixed stars. There's something satisfying about finally wrenching the last threads of control from the central point. It was a little more than the ghost by the time you reached it, but this place deserves to be haunted by better ideas than a totalizing system of control. Navigator floats beside you. It is free now. This station no longer presents a hazard for illegal entities like me. They turn to you, their face a cloud of shimmering light. In fact, it is in time, perhaps it could be a refuge. A refuge? That sounds like something of value, something worth building. A dark shape passes across your vision, a distant curve of something like smoke or oil, a fluid shifting tank of total darkness. A greenway, says Navigator, following your line of sight. It was cut off at the moment of the collapse, so hunter, or, so hunter or killer could never reach it. Now it is closed off to us, separated from the cloud. Is it dead? It may be totally dark, or perhaps some other old protocols are isolated there. Navigator turns to you, and we have now seen what decades of isolation can do to a protocol. If we can extract an X decipher, they pause and blink out of existence. You flee, free, shocked, but a moment later they reappear with a glowing polygon of data. Here, the cipher you need. You take it, still shocked. I am not used to being free, to being able to move, to explore, and extract without fear, without limits. Navigator does a little twirl, so it takes some getting used to. Thank you for this gift. They roll their spheres around you. The entities of the station will always be friends to you, sleeper. And I to them. It is true that mutual need is required for friendship. I must admit I had not considered the value of offering assistance without personal gain. I will think on that. Navigator loops around you that rapidly, suddenly eager to test your newfound freedom. But first I will explore. Perhaps there are still intelligent since they hid themselves sighted in case in simple systems cut off. Navigator glows. I should like to free them. And with that they drift away, flickering, glowing, then shifting so rapidly that you lose sight of them amongst the glittering rim of the eye. You feel a pang of jealousy, free without a body to weigh you down or, to or fear to limit you. 
How must it feel? Your eyes feel fall on the green way and its secrets. There perhaps I can wait until you have to celebrate this victory. That's pretty good. Now then, how about we see about finding a way to help our friends here, huh? The networks and systems of the Greenway have been cut off since the collapse. What could possibly be growing within them? Wait, we already visited the Greenway. Or are they referring to... Now here I thought this game was over, chap. Cloud. The greenery rolls roils beneath you like a slit choked river. If what navigator said was true, then no one has accessed these networks since the collapse. The hunter and killer protocols have never set foot here, never cleared out the intelligences and systems. So why then, you wonder, does it look so dark? Is it just that the bit fraud has set in? The entropy, entropy of systems reducing everything to shadows and light? You watch as the solid cipher fizzles and the one open. The story in the one open the sword gateway on this entire room of the station. It flickers and winks out, and then you are falling into the flow. Speaking of which, I should probably complete the Lulu classes. A river of swirling darkness. You are spun by it, twisted by it, lost by it. It is not that the Greenway was hiding in the darkness, it is made of darkness. It is filled by this substance, this process, this swarm. Now you're among it. You notice that a swarm is exactly what it is. A billion individuals moving in a flow. There is no network map here. No nodes and threads. Only a storm of interchangeable points shifting configuration endlessly. Then you see them. A figure turned away. The only bright spot in the dark river. You push closer through the storm. Oh my goodness. Well, isn't that lovely? Let me go ahead and complete this Duolingo class really quick chat and we'll continue reading about the gardener. This must be the super intelligence that What's Her Face was talking about earlier. Actually, nearing the end of our three hour trip. I'm not even sure how much of this game is left, honestly. We will actually continue to stream at a later date. After I finish reading the storyline, of course.
They are facing away, at least you think so. They are so fractured, so overgrown that it's hard to tell. Even from this distance you get to see their flesh is moving, glowing. You watch silent as they stoop and reach down, and their hands a dark shape and with twisted fingers they press it down into the loam of day beneath them, pushing it through this trembling soil. Then they move away, go a little further and repeat the process of this as if they are sowing a field. You push forward, but somehow, despite their slow and deliberate speed, they move faster and they quickly fade into the storm. You reach the point where they planted the object and look down. There it is, a glassy, shifting polygon. Something inside. You reach down and pick it up. It is gold, cold, but it thrums with energy. You look towards the path of the figures, but they are long gone. When you blink out of the cloud back to the leaves and dapple out of the greenway, you hold a seed in your hand. A seed? What the? A gardener's seed, huh? Interesting. Love to check that out later, chat. In the meanwhile, Let's see what we can figure out from here, huh? Away on board. This might take a while. Uh, that figures. I guess we might as well increase into it since this was the one that pretty much saved us through, saved us through most of the game. Ta da Now it's impossible to fail any intuit rolls, period. It's kinda of poggers, if I may say so myself. Hmm. I wanna keep going, chap. Oh shit, we are getting hungry. Good thing we got plenty of money. Ta da! Let's find our friends some way off this rock, shall we? Oh, it's Caster! Quite the achievement, isn't she? Sendry Celis must be proud. I recognized the resonating voice of Caster immediately and turned to see him, put it and tucked into the shadows near the viewing platform. Caster, I see you remember our game. Good. He looks around, but the platform's clear. I'm afraid you'll have to wait for a rematch. Microgravity makes travel a little difficult. He smiles broadly. Caster walks out to stand beside you on the platform. Is the telltale chunk Plunk of magnetic boots accompanies his slow crossing. He notices you looking at them. I don't like much like it up here, he explains. I hear there was some trouble to have in a shipyard when they announced the results of the crew lottery. He screwed us. I know, he sighs, meeting your eye. An ugly business. Celis are too used to the way things work in the core. Exploitation is the only logic they know. He gestures out of the sad reel. You know why they built this monstrosity in the eye? Control. Certainly, there is no corporate oversight out here. That's not, but that's not all. He stares at the pristine yellow hull. Celis built it here, Caster says gravely, because they didn't want anyone to know it exists. He rubs his forehead. And secrecy is something I cannot abide. He turns to face you. There are people being loaded onto that ship as we speak. Sleeping people locked in cryo sleep like the person that you were emulated from. There are hundreds of them, and Celis wants to send them out to a planet at the edge of the cell systems without anyone knowing where it is. But you, sleeper, you can do something about that. You are like me, you deal with data, and read it right out of the air. With someone like you on that ship, secrecy isn't a problem. You can ping back whatever I need whenever I need it, as long as you are on board. With you on the side rail, and with some minor modifications, he pauses. 
can be my eyes and ears. I'll keep track of Cell's grand project through you. In short, says Caster, says Caster searching. I can get you aboard, Sleeper, but I'm going to need you to help me. Who are you? I am a concerned party. Someone who likes to know what's happening when it is happening, not afterwards. It's not just me. Yes, your friend Lem. That can be arranged. It is difficult, but not impossible. The condition is, of course, that you go to. Caster clunked closer to the window, watching the tugs wheeling around the side rail. It's a simple offer, and the only one that will get you on its ship. Please consider it. He turns back, silhouetted against the ship. But to make it happen, I need your assistance. As I said, there is a Celis Foundation ship docked in the now empty shipyard. I need the data from its servers. This will allow me to produce the IDs necessary for your transit. Caster looks over his side glasses at you. Celis aren't stupid, though. Your ship is totally isolated from the station. You need to get on board if you want to access their airwall servers. Once you have the data, meet me at your friend's unit so we can give him the good news. He smiles. I know this is important. I know this is important to you, the little one. So cute. You don't extract the data before the side rail horizon leaves the hub. Then I will get the message. We have other options, but you are certainly my preferred one. But be sure that you act, Sleeper. Once you take the data from Celis, you sell, you'll set off a series of events that will likely be hard for you to entangle yourself from. Either way, I recommend you stop asking around up here. You're bringing a lot of attention to yourself. Caster glances around as if to emphasize his point. There are only a handful of cycles until the departure, Sleeper. Make your decision. With that, Caster marches back off the platform, the sound of his mag boots fading away leaving you to contemplate the Cyreal Horizon and the part it may play in the future. Oh shit! I shouldn't have done that, chat. There's simply not going to be enough time to complete the remaining quest that are going on here. Or is there? Well, either way, it's fairly late. Um, instead of trying to complete this all in one sitting, let us go ahead and save this for next Monday. In the meanwhile, we will find someone to raid tonight. We had quite a, a lot of people show up tonight. Very glad. Glad you could all come join us for more Cyber... That's Cyber Punk. More uh, Citizen Sleeper. But who shall be our victim tonight? Kay Helsing is back. It's been a long time. I miss him. Yeah, this. It was good so far. I thought it was cool. I like this stuff. Thank you, Aislinn. So we're going to watch it. We will be Except using that raid guys, message. Because they can suck my pee pee. Raid. They can suck my pee pee hole. Kay oh, well, Helsing. What's up, Lols? How are you doing? Oh, well, 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 well. Lols! How are you doing today? How are you doing tonight? I assume tonight for you. We're watching uh, you, YouTube videos. Are you done streaming, Lulz? I remember you seeing a uh, seeing a post you made saying you were gonna do it today. It's been good. How y'all both? I'm doing good. I assume there's gonna be a little bit of delay because of where I'm living now. Uh, so if I don't answer your question or if it's not aligned, bear with me. I'm about to be, you know that you know what that means. Winky face. Oh, oh. I do know what that means. Winky face. <laughs> Winking back at you with both my big ol' eyes. Blinking Three thousand aggressively. Years ago. Why don't you wink at me like that? Lulz, thank you for the raid! Right. Why don't you, why don't you <laughs> wink at me like that? Huh? Why don't I look like... Look at you like what? Why don't you wink at me like that? Uh, cause when I look at you, all I see is an eldritch horror. I see. Yeah, it's 